the Southern Philippines Medical Center, Institute of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine, or SPMC-IPBM, stands from the year 1918 to present. Just like any other legacy, SPMC-IPBM came from humble beginnings. Starting off as the health unit for Sakada workers in the year 1918. In 1919, it was called the Davao Public Hospital and later evolved into becoming Davao General Hospital or DGH. In 1957, through their Public Act number 1859, DGH was converted to the Davao Regional Medical and Training Center or DRMTC. In 1982, DRMTC was renamed as Davao Medical Center or DMC, which later became known as the Southern Philippines Medical Center, SPMC, since 2009. In 1986, Dr. Alfredo Benzon, the Secretary of the Department of Health, appropriated a special trust fund for the rehabilitation of the Davao Mental Hospital. Davao Mental Hospital was placed under the administrative care of the then Davao Medical Center. The prime movers who initiated its rehabilitation were Dr. Asuncion Paraan and Dr. Lorene Conanan. While DMH functioned as a separate hospital, the administrative personnel were under Davao Medical Center and identified as DMC Department of Psychiatry. During the first three to five years, a transition process occurred as the resident physicians of the institution shifted from non-training to training status. SPMC IPBM's residency training program was accredited by the Philippine Board of Psychiatry in the year 1994, priding itself as the residency training program in psychiatry outside of Metro Manila to gain accreditation. In the succeeding years, the training program has been successfully accredited by the Accreditation Board of the Philippine Psychiatric Association. SPMC IPBM produced 32 graduates in its residency training program. Over the years, SPMC IPBM constantly evolved to be the prime psychiatric training institution in Mindanao. Led by the past chairpersons. At present, SPMC IPBM continues to train young aspiring psychiatrists headed by the institution's young and dynamic chairman, Dr. Abigail Lozada Laganao, and training officer, Dr. Joya Fe Di Ancheta. Eleven residents are currently having their training in IPBM. Among them are three first year residents. Two second year residents and six third year residents. They are under the tutelage of the department's consultants.
Well, um, first of all, we have to understand that what used to be the Davao Mental Hospital was a remotely administered, purely service unit, which is an extension of the National Center for Mental Health. And we had to evolve to become SPMC Institute of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine, the first accredited training residency training program outside of Mindanao. So that transformation involved a lot of challenges. One, transforming the physical setup. It was an old hospital that wasn't meant to be a mental health facility. So it was a challenge to structure and restructure an old dilapidated building into something that was fit from a therapeutic milieu. There were also a lot of administrative changes that had to be made. One, we had to become part of SPMC, which was a training hospital. And we were both looked at as the Department of Psychiatry, but at the same time, we were running like a small hospital within the big hospital. And we were five kilometers away from the main hospital. So that involved a lot of organizational changes and changes in the setup, in the administration, in the budgeting, staffing, that had to be um, changed. As far as staffing, we also had to become professionally equipped to work as a therapeutic milieu with all the allied mental health professionals working together as a team so that we could become a therapeutic milieu. And so that involved psych making the nurses to become psychiatric nurses, the psychologists, the um, occupational therapists, the pharmacists, the admin staff, even the dietitians, and so we, and even the record section, and so we had to do a lot of team building, training, policy development, um, standard setting, and um, system setting, system setup that involved training, destigmatizing, creating a culture of competence, lobbying with my admin staff. And only then did we feel that we were ready to be a residency training program. Because we were looking not just residency training program, but also as a program which would cater to interns and clerks, nurses for psychiatric residents, training for residency, uh, nurses for psychiatric nursing of the different schools, psychology students, even pastoral workers, and students who were doing researches. And it was only then that we felt, if we had that already, that we were ready to be a training program. So we did evolve from one to 10 consultants with two subspecialty now and working for more. And from three residents to now 11. And we have graduated the first batch of three and now we have 32. Just when we were progressing and working on all this, the fire happened in 2013 And that did set us back a lot. So it was both a loss and an opportunity. But then we were able to work that out. And so we've really been more focused on working as, on the residency training program. Our training activities were initially just focused on the activities within the department and within the hospital. And then we had to expand to 
the main hospital, which was, had all the residency training activities, I mean, a residency training programs accredited in the different departments. So we had to work on referrals. We had to work on interdepartmental coordination. We had to compete. In, in the inter-hospital case conferences. We also had to work on mental health programs within the hospital, like stress in the workplace and improving the well-being of the staff in general. And then we also had to, of course, work with balancing service and training, which is a continual challenge. But it was also, it also helped to enrich the residency training program because we had to do a lot of community programs and interdepartmental programs, which enriched the training program and the experiences of the residencies. We had to work on researches and we're happy and proud to say we're now going to compile all our researches. And we also had to start working with not just outside the walls of the hospital and SPMC, but the wider region of 11 and um, the other training institutions, not just competing, but also working together to enhance each other's programs. And we also do, done this with the pharmaceutical companies. So we've gone a long way, but still it's a work in progress, but definitely a work that is progressing. So that's where we are now. Well, more than being a training institution, IPBM, or otherwise known as the Institute of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine, has also taken pride in encouraging its residents to participate in various academic and non-academic competitions. And why is that? We want to mold them into well-rounded psychiatrists and sharpen their knowledge and skills in the practice of psychiatry. Having fun is also not taboo in our institution and we fully support them to showcase their talents. That is why the department has received various awards through the years. So what are these? We have graduates who placed first, second, third, and fourth places in the diplomate written exam. And for the interdepartmental competitions at Southern Philippines Medical Center, we got second place in 2011 in the in annual interdepartmental oral case presentation. We were also finalists in the 27th Interhospital Psychiatric Case Competition sponsored by NCMH Physician Association Incorporation and Philippine Psychiatric Association in the year 2011. In addition, we were the top three in the SPMC Interdepartmental Research Contest from the years 2008 until 2012. We have clinched Best Presenter in 2012 and placed second in the poster presentation of the same year. During the PPA Annual National Research Contest in 2021, we secured second place on the same year we also won first place in the PPA Mid-Year National Research Contest. And finally, in the succeeding years 2020 and 2021, we earned first and second places respectively during the Torrent Young Scholar Awards Contest. Graduates have completed 19 researches.
and these have contributed to the pool of mental research which can be used as sources and reference for future research. Some of these studies have won awards and recognitions in both inter- and intra-hospital competitions. The Southern Philippines Medical Center, Institute of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine, responded to the mental health needs of various communities in Mindanao, such as the Mindanao Massacre, Typhoon, uh, Sendong and Yolanda, the Rujas bombing, the Marawi siege. The institution has also provided psychosocial support to the victims of the successive earthquakes in Magsaysay, Dawa del Sur, also to the C-130 plane crash survivors with severe burn injuries and during the COVID-19 pandemic. We have several also linkages to government agencies and has catered to the referrals for mental health concerns and interventions. The institution has also served as an avenue for exposure to patients with psychiatric conditions for local and foreign medical clerks from the Davao Medical School Foundations and also from Broken Shar Memorial Hospital. The post-grad interns also affiliated with PMC. The nursing students from 26 nursing schools all over Mindanao. And even the resident physicians specializing in family medicine. These allowed the resident physicians to hone their skill in teaching and imparting knowledge. The Department of Health has also connected with us to conduct uh, lectures on different cities and municipalities on mental health gap action program. And we have continued to monitor and supervise these areas. We are also tapped by various agencies, it's an NGO and GO, and schools to conduct trainings and seminars regarding mental health uh, advocacies. At the start of the pandemic, uh, some training activities were temporarily put on hold as all efforts were concentrated on addressing the COVID-19. Our residents were deployed to various COVID areas to aid with the manpower. Actually, some of our uh, doctors, the residents, the medical staff, and other ad admin staff were also infected by the COVID-19 during this time. However, they were able to, to recover from these infections. By July 2020, we have adopted several changes in the training activities to ensure continuity of learning and training. The virtual platforms such as WebEx and Zoom were used to host the conferences and didactics. The evaluations of the residents was for the reporters was done the via the book widgets or email and submitted to the department secretary for compilations. The OSCE was done in a blended format where the resident interviews the patient while the panel conducts their evaluation online. Of course, strict observation of the minimum health protocols were done to protect both the resident and the patient from the COVID infections. Written examinations was conducted twice a year prior to the pandemic. However, the department adjusted the mid-year and the annual evaluation of the residents to consider the changes during the pandemic. The retin examinations were administered in observation of health protocols. So for the services, 
being the chairman during the height of the pandemic, describing it as challenging would be an understatement. The fear of the unknown and for safety was predominant among the staff, even when we were considered a non-COVID area. However, our dedication to service also persevered. We continued our face-to-face -face outpatient department service. So we never stopped, we never closed our OPD services. Once the Davao City was placed in a general community quarantine, of course. Infection control protocols were observed and the number of patients were decreased to 30 from our usual pre-pandemic time of census of 70 to 100 patients a day. Hotline numbers were made available for patients or for families or guardians to call for consultations. And we had also the issuance of electronic prescriptions. This is to make sure that the patient still has the access to mental health services. We slowly increased the number of patients catered through face-to-face -face over the years. And currently, we are back to our pre-pandemic census of 70 patients per day. But still, the hotline numbers as well as teleconsult are still utilized. For our inpatients, infection control protocols were established through the issuance of the ward guidelines on preventive measures for COVID-19. This covers the infections control protocols for staff and patients, which include the thermal scanning, hand washing, practice of cough etiquette, and social distancing. Immediate isolation and investigations were done of patients developing flu-like symptoms. Isolation and step-down areas were identified per ward to decrease the risk of exposing other patients. Wearing of PPE is required for residents and staff when they go on rounds of the wards. We also recognize the need of our patients for additional protection. We have managed to provide our patients with COVID vaccinations and even up to the booster through our uh, Southern Philippines Medical Center. As of now, we are continually adapting. As part of the largest hospital in the Philippines, SPMC IPBM's role has always included academic and clinical services hand in hand. The academic activities of our residents include case presentations, grand rounds, didactics, and supervision. They act both as learners and mentors by supervising and teaching clinical clerks and interns. They eagerly participate and have won several interdepartmental and inter-hospital competitions, such as interesting case competitions, research competitions, and other academic endeavors. In terms of research, the department continually offers support and opportunities for research. Our residents are exposed to various opportunities for clinical learning. They rotate in the different wards during their first year, such as the crisis intervention unit and the acute and chronic wards. During their second and third years, they are tasked to handle the outpatient services catering to different cases such as adult, child, geria, and forensic cases while being senior residents in their assigned wards. They also rotate with the internal medicine under neurosciences and have ample exposure to CL and community psychiatry, including disaster response. In 50 years, the Southern Philippines Medical Center, Institute of Psychiatry and Behavioral Medicine, will be a premier psychiatric training institution that provides world-class mental health care to Mindanaoans, guided by timely and relevant researches in the true definition of SPMC's vision. We will be producing globally competitive, service-oriented, 
and exceptional psychiatrists and allied health professionals whose knowledge, skills, and researches set them at par with international standards.